Hi, my name is Michael Bean. I'm an acting teacher. I am uh, leading today's lesson for myfreeactingclass.com. Uh, today is Thursday, October the 15th, and today is our Ask Me Anything session, uh, so which we typically do once a week unless we have guests on Thursdays. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your questions and I'm happy to talk to you about basically anything. Uh, yesterday we talked a lot about uh, branding uh, and you know, what that's like both in the LA market and in Vancouver market, kind of finding your niche. Uh, today we, we can talk about what do you want to talk about? And if nobody has questions, you know, then I don't know, I'll pull up a scene and we'll you know, look at a scene together. There's always things we can do. But uh, where would you like me to start today? You can throw it in the chat window or you can just unmute yourself. It's a small enough group that the likelihood of us all talking over top of each other is fairly low. Go ahead and be selfish with your questions. You know, like the, right, you can be like, well, here's this thing that I specifically, just me, am thinking about. Do you know anything about this? I can't guarantee I know anything about it, but I'm totally happy to field those questions. See Candy typing. Do a scene break thing. Don't try to memorize faster. Ooh, I haven't talked about memorizing in quite a while. Yes, totally happy to start there. You know, so um, the uh, here's the exercise that I've been doing uh, most recently uh, with people. You know, which is uh, let me pull up a scene and uh, and use it for a scene analysis. Love your technique. Um, the me, me, me. Oh, right. That's why I was not looking. So here was the scene that I thought uh, we, we would uh, look at uh, today if nobody had questions. You know, and um, let's see, the, the main character, uh, Gia, would you be willing to read uh, the main character for me. You know, it's a 12 year old girl. I think her name's Krista. Okay. Okay, great. So now I'll read Lorelai. You know, so here's what we've got. <clears throat> uh, Krista Vol Valis, precocious and wise beyond her years. Um, right, 12 year old girl. La -da -da -da. Uh, give me this first line. It's not magic, you know. Laura Lee Wright, uh, 20, beautiful and magnetic, is also dressed up. She settles Krista's dress and pins up her hair. Sure it is. A new dress isn't gonna, a new dress isn't gonna make the other kids suddenly like me. I'm still going to be Krista the weirdo. You're not a weirdo. Good, and so uh, what you can see is the first time Gia's reading it, because she has some experience uh, reading material, you know, it's, she sounds pretty close to the way she might wanna perform it. At least she sounds like she's sort of actually feeling it, the words sound nice and fresh. Now, one of the things that often happens uh, when, uh, with film and TV scenes is they accidentally, um, uh, is that they, uh, they accidentally uh, get this slightly musical quality to them. You know, and the perfect example of this is if you've ever seen an elementary school play or a high school play, you know, because everybody's like, that's unbelievable. Oh my gosh, where did they go? We've got to figure this out. Oh, I'm so sad. And it's like everything's got this slight kind of musical lilt to it. But I got to say, it creeps in very, very fast. And so even if uh, I was to get Gia to say these same lines three or four more times in a row, what would happen is she would accidentally and unconsciously copy the way it sounded the first time. And, uh, and it's possible that even by the second or third read, it would start to sound slightly false, just slightly musical. And so one of the things with memorizing that I think is really important is to break that pattern on purpose. You know, and I, I used to use a different tool. The tool that I use right now, uh, I'm gonna show you, uh, Jia. You know, so instead of saying this line, you know, so you're gonna need to unmute yourself so you can demo for me. Instead of this, uh, saying this line, say the words just facts. It's not magic. No, no, no. Instead of, instead of saying this line, say the words, just facts. It's not magic. No, no, no. Instead of saying these line, this line, instead of saying this line, instead of saying those words, please say the words, 
just facts. Just facts. Exactly, good. Now say the line like you said that, so that you're not trying to act it, you're just giving me facts. It's not magic, you know. Do you hear how different that is? So what you're doing is you're learning it just as information, just as facts, because otherwise what's gonna happen is, did you, and if, if everybody else heard, in those last two reads, she had almost exactly the same intonation as her first read. And it still sounds pretty fresh, but by even a couple more reads, it's going to start sounding like, it's not magic, you know. Da, 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 And each repetition will get more and more false, or that's the risk. You know, so um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm, so sure it is. Now say the words, just facts. Just facts. You're, okay, so it's, it doesn't have to be flat. It doesn't have to be neutral. But just say the words, just facts. Just facts. Good. Now say, say this line like you said that. A new dress isn't going to make the other kids suddenly like me. I'm still going to be Krista the weirdo. You're not a weirdo. Okay, so just facts, just facts. And then as you're doing just facts, you can start to add images. Now something that I learned from a fantastic book, which I will try and pull up on Amazon quickly. Or, <laughs> Um, the, I read this uh, book a number of years ago, but it had some really interesting stuff to it. It's called Moonwalking with Einstein, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything uh, by a guy named Joshua Four, you know, who it was an, uh, he was a, science writer for Wired Magazine, I think, and he was asked to cover the U.S. memory championships. And these memory championships are like super weird. It's like, they're like, here's a thousand digits, right? So like one, zero, nine, 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 four, nine, like a thousand of those. You have to remember them in exact order. Go. You know, stuff like that. You know, and, and people compete in these. And he went one year and he was like expecting to make fun of it. But then he was like, whoa, this is amazing. How do people even do this? And he sort of did a deep, deep dive in learning about it. And then he went back the next year and won. You know, after the, year, the first year going like, it's impossible. Like, how does anybody do this? And so it's, it's his book about like how he did that. Um, one of the things that seemed the most useful in there for actors is the idea that our memories for visual information are literally a thousand times better than our memories for abstract information. For abstract information, we can remember between, depending on who you are, maybe four to seven things. This is why phone numbers are typically seven digits, because once it gets over that, it starts to get scrambling. You know, but pictures, visual information, his example was you walk into somebody's house for 30 seconds and then you close your eyes and you are gonna have thousands of pieces of information about where things are and colors and textures and you're not gonna remember everything, but you're gonna remember thousands of pieces of information because that's how good our memories for visual things are. So one of the things that people who do these memory competitions do is they practice turning abstract information into visual information as quickly as possible. And where that's relevant for actors is when you get into what uh, Ivana Chubbuck, for instance, calls inner imagery. Yeah, and the basic idea is what are you picturing? What is the visual? Because that you'll be able to hold on to better than you will be able to hold on to the abstract. Here were the exact words in the exact order. That's an abstract thing. You know, um, I was working with a nine-year-old recently, and she's like, well, when somebody tells me a story, I can remember it. I just have trouble remembering lines. I was like, yeah, see? When somebody tells you a story, you can remember it. So let's just get you to tell a story. Um, and so, uh, uh, Gia, are you okay continuing to be my demo and, and you know, go back to like memorizing these lines? Perfect. So we're gonna stay in just facts, but we're gonna talk about the, um, and so basically the, you, you look at yourself in the dress and you look in the mirror, you know, and the dress, you know, like it's a very pretty dress, but you still look like you. you know? And so that's the, and so the seeing yourself you know, uh, in the mirror and being like, you know, that's what makes you say this line. And again, you're just going to give you the just facts version, but it's the image first that makes you want to say the line. So what's the first line? It's not magic, you know. And then I'm going to say, sure it is. You know, and then you're going to look at Lorelai, you know, who's trying and she's trying, and you're going to see that she's doing that like preschool teacher face of like, sure, you're like, you can do it. I believe in you. You know, uh, and uh, precocious, you know, means old for your age. You know, and so this comes from seeing Lorelai's face where she's like, oh, yay. And you're like, okay, let's get real. You know, and give me just this next line. A new, just a new dress isn't uh, going to make the other kids like me, suddenly like me. 
A new dress isn't going to make the other kids suddenly like me. Good. You know, and then you might, uh, and then you're going to reference yourself, right? You're like, yep, this is me, right? And so the image, you know, there is kids making fun of you, right? The things that, right? So the image that you would want to find for yourself, you know, is, you know, the like kids, you know, say calling you a weirdo in class or in the hallway or, you know, and then you would give me this last line. I'm still going to be the, I'm still going to be Krista the weirdo. Good. Now let's try it. And you might remember, and you might forget some of the words, you know, but as long as you get the story, then you're fine. So you look at yourself in the mirror, which is going to be on the opposite side of the camera from me. You know, the, right? So you look over there in the mirror and you look at yourself in the, uh, and then you, uh, and you keep looking in the mirror and you say, look in the mirror, look in the mirror. Don't look at, look at, don't look at me. Look in the mirror, look in the mirror and, and, and just go, look. And then, and then say the line. So now we're acting it for real. It's not magic, you know. <sighs> sure it is. And you look back at me and I'm making my like uh, uh, face, look at me. And do you remember what the next line is? You see, you're talking about the dress, the dress you've just looked at in the mirror, right? So you're looking at my happy face and you're like, uh, hello, dress isn't gonna change anything. The line is a new dress isn't going to make the other kids suddenly like me. A new dress me. isn't going to... Do I look at you? Yes. Right. So you look in the mirror for the first bit because you want to see the mirror. Then you look at me and you talk to me. A new dress isn't going to make the other kids suddenly like me. And then there's a micro pause where you remember the kids making fun of you in the hallways. And what do they say about you? They're still going to think I'm Krista the weirdo. Exactly. And does it matter that she said it wrong? No. What matters is that she got the story, right? She remembered the story, right? So if, if you say, I'm still going to be Krista the weirdo, fine. If you say, they're still going to think I'm, it doesn't, you get the story and that's what keeps this, it moving forward. It's where actors get messed up is when they stumble over, they st they go back and correct themselves because they care about getting the word exactly right. They're caring about the abstract information instead of about the story. Are you moving the story forward? Do you have the images? Yeah, so um, that's to the larger answer to Dia's question. So let's, um, Gia, if you're okay, and thank you so much for being brave and being my demo, let's do this one more time. And, and even if you kind of forget, just breathe and stay in it and keep acting. And as long as we get the story, we're fine. Right, so start by looking in the mirror, Stand by and action. It's not magic, you know. Sure it is. A new dress isn't gonna make the other kids suddenly like me. I'm still Krista the weirdo. Right, and that, and that little beat where she needed to find the image, because the more full it is, right, because it was full, uh, the, um, be, it's the weight isn't an issue at all. The pause isn't an issue at all because it's, there's an image behind it. There's a, uh, there's something there. And it's not like, here's what I'm going to do with my face or here's what I'm going to feel. It's here's what I'm going to feed this extremely sensitive system of mine. Here's the image I'm going to give myself. And then I'll probably have feelings based on that. And I'm going to trust those are going to call it words. Um, okay. Uh, give, give Gia some, uh, the sign language applause. Applause! Thanks for being brave! Yeah! Uh, right, really nice work. Right, and it's not sing-songy, exactly. So Dia put in the chat window, like, it's not sing-songy. Because she has the images and it's not sing-songy. And we didn't rehearse it, even accidentally we didn't rehearse it. Here's how I'm going to say the lines. Instead, we rehearsed it as, you know, just facts. Like, here's the information, here's the story. Yeah. I'm just saying the same thing I've already said. You get it. Uh, Candy has a question here. Uh, she said, I really enjoyed our conversation about branding yesterday. Is there a correlation between personality and branding, or is it mainly about how you look? And <clears throat> separating them, you know, I think is tricky. <laughs> you know, with a photo, you know, like, I guess um, congruence, there, that's the word that I need. You know, what we're hoping for is congruence, you know, because there's this, here's how you look, and here's who you are as a person, and there will be some overlap between those two, 
and that's where you want to focus your branding right because as an artist you're like well there's all of me as a person that 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 i don't immediately look like great good hopefully you get a chance to do those roles in theater or in independent films or in student films initially probably most likely in professional film and tv you're going to be cast for what you look like because they're scared and and i've been over this uh, before but i feel like it's useful to keep coming back to that everybody on the food chain ahead of you has fear you know that the talent agents are scared they're going to send you in and uh you're going to mess up and they're you're going to wreck their relationship with the casting director you know the casting directors are scared that they're going to call you in uh, or that they're not they're going to call in 10 people and none of them are going to be right you know and they're going to look bad in front of the producers and directors the producers and direct uh, the uh, the directors you know, are scared that they're going to hire the wrong actors uh, and they're not going to be able to get their story and they're never going to get a chance to make another movie the producers are scared they're going to get the wrong actors you know and they're not going to be able to get their story and they're going to lose all of their money and never be going to be able to make a movie again and so the way a lot of those folks deal with that fear you know at, especially at the casting director director producer level is that they hire somebody who looks right for the part right because you know uh if you uh get somebody you know who looks exactly right for the part and they can't act you know, then you can just get them to say the line real quietly to themselves you know, uh, while looking at the ground and they can be like, yeah, and everybody gets the story right away and they can just move on and their story is not wrecked. And so the, and so at least with North American film and television, uh, it's one of the safeties that I think they look for. Uh, and so does that answer your question, Candy? It's definitely not unrelated to your personality, right? You wouldn't want a brand, even if you looked very sweet and innocent, if you didn't have any sweet and innocent in you, this was what Candy said was like sort of her, the thing people assume about her. If you didn't have any sweet and innocent in you, in your personality, probably wouldn't be the right fit. You wouldn't want to take photos of that because they would call you in based on the photo and they'd be like, sweet and innocent, oh my God, who's this punk rock girl with the heavy metal t-shirt? Uh, right, what we, we want to do is find the spot that overlaps between who you are as a person, you know, who you are as a person and how you look. Right, that, that, uh, that that's probably where branding is the most effective, in my opinion. Uh, one of the other things uh, that came to me uh, or that I thought of after yesterday's lesson is that several people said, oh, people usually think I'm shy. Um, that's, prob that's probably of the, uh, any of the adjectives that people threw out, the one that's not going to be useful to you. Right? The, uh, typically speaking, uh, you probably do not want to present as, as shy like branding as shy, you can brand as vulnerable, you know, or um, you can eat, like I've even seen people, uh, mostly like girls under the age of 10, you know, whose, uh, whose brand, you know, whether they know it or not, is like a traumatized girl, you know, because they're kind of like looking at the camera and they've got the big eyes and they look like they might cry at any moment. And yeah, there's tons of work for that girl, you know, but shy, you know, in the sense of like, don't look at me, probably not going to help you out in the world of film and TV. So even if shy is like an actually big part of your personality, you know, or an actually like big part of you know, how you come across to new people, probably not where you want to focus your attention on branding. So I, I, after yesterday's lesson, I was like, probably should have said that, you know, because I don't want to unfairly go like, yeah, totally get shy headshots. That's going to do great for you. Probably not going to actually, <laughs> right? Instead, you'd want to follow that shy into like, you know, okay, well, you know, because of that shyness, what is their guess about me? Something like that. Okay, uh, we've got five more minutes. What do you want me to talk about? Uh, Claudine, uh, yesterday uh, you sort of threw in something about uh, the you know, Christian's branding. You know, uh, do, uh, do you, did you have any questions after yesterday's branding lesson or is there anything you'd like me to talk about? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, Christian, I think, is what ten. He's not. Um, he's coming up to nine. Nine, right? Yeah. And so, uh, she, she, uh, yesterday, uh, Claudine said he goes out for, um, you know, like cute kid with big eyes, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> right. That that like you know, she, and she's probably you know, thinking about you know, like looking at the breakdowns and going, yeah, huh? In general, you know, my kid gets called in for like cute kid, big eyes. You know, so great. You know, like cute. You know, is definitely a brand. You know, nice and clear. If he has big eyeballs, you know, the you know, or people notice them more. Fantastic. I hope he milks the heck out of it. You know, and that by the time he you know turns into a adolescent boy you know, who you know, is it like some other flavor than cute, he's got a bunch of credits on his resume and can leverage those. Um, so uh, the uh, like this is such a specific example, you know, and not in, like immediately relevant, you know, to our uh, uh, to the little people, you know, but I had a um, I had a woman who I took acting classes with, you know, like a peer of mine for years, uh, who made, um, who was just like extremely comfortable, you know, with her body. And she's like, yeah, I like being naked. I'll be naked on camera. It's fine. You know? And so for whatever reason, you know, she kept getting cast as like the girl who takes her top off and then dies in horror movies. And she was in like Final Destination. She was in a couple of them and she was in like a Halloween and she was in like a Jason movie. And she was in like, and she was, like really, like she did the whole canon of horror movies as like the girl who like is sort of half naked and then is killed horribly, you know. And then like I don't know, that's a fun day on set. You know, there's some like special effects, blood, nothing scary happens to the person, you know. And um, she, I think, you know, did a thing that is very hard to do, you know, which is that like saw that this was happening and decided to lean into it on purpose. You know, and so got a bunch of those roles. And so by the time that she was ready uh, to, that they weren't really seeing her as that or tra uh, uh, was transitioning out of that, she had this huge resume, you know, and all these, like, uh, all these uh, feature films. And her agent leveraged that, you know, to get her better auditions. She ended, uh, last time I checked up on her, you know, she was doing like a really solid recurring role in a cop show that was shooting in Toronto. Right, she had to pack up her life here and you know, fly to Toronto you know, to be one of the leads in this cop show. Right? It, it, um, and so that's an extreme example. You know, or um, Ben Cotton, you know, who I talked about briefly yesterday, you know, who uh, came in a couple of months ago. Uh, I think he worked as like psycho killer, like over and over and over again. Like, and he, and if those of you who were there for his interview, like he is the kindest, gentlest human, but he worked as like psycho killer over and over, different versions of Psycho Killer. Uh, and now he's got so, uh, such an established resume that now he can audition for anything. You know, because people are like, oh, well, you know, he's, look, he's got all of these lead credits. He's got all of these guest star, all of these supporting credits. You know, so clearly he knows what he's doing. You know, and so that's another way to think about branding is that it's not, here's what I'm gonna do forever. It's here's how I'm gonna get my first 10 roles. You know, because once you've got those 10 roles, then casting directors can look at your resume and say, oh, oh, great. Like, Gia's worked on film a bunch. Of course we can see her as, like, soccer girl. Of course we can see her as punk rock girl. You know, 10 other directors and producers, you know, have taken a chance on her, and their films have not, you know, uh, and it has, she hasn't ruined their lives or careers. You know, so probably she's a safe bet. Uh, and that's that's a lot of what they're looking for, in my opinion, when they're looking at resumes, is they're doing risk assessment, they're doing risk management. Yeah. And so um, one of the things that you will hear if you investigate more deeply Bonnie Gillespie's work, who I mentioned yesterday, is she will say something to the effect of, you should be so lucky as to get typecast, right? If you get, ty if you get typecast, you know, like, uh, wipe your tears with hundred dollar bills. You were just like, <laughs> right because being typecast means you get cast all the time, and that's the thing that everybody's trying to do. So uh, there's another sort of little piece in the world of of branding for you. Some people are like, but what if I do this role too many times? Unless you are the absolute like top billing on a TV show, right? Unless you're Doctor Spock. Right, unless you are you know, Doogie Hauser, like unless you are the person the show is all about, you know, then probably even doing that same kind of role ten times in a row uh, is not going to impact your career negatively in any way. Especially if you are continuing to learn and grow as an artist, so that maybe the world is seeing this marketing piece of here's where who I am as a person or who I am as an artist overlaps with how I look or how I come across. But you know all these other pieces.
you know, if you, because if you know that, then that's what you are offering as your range. And that's a piece of, uh, what you are bringing as a, an artist. Uh, and Dia, I'm so happy to do uh, like another uh, script analysis, you know, um, and to go into a little bit more detail. Uh, you know, we looked at just a couple of lines, you know, of the scene, you know, but maybe we'll, uh, you know, properly look at Ascension next week and I'll just save it here in the folder. Okay, that's just a smidge past 4.30. And I noticed even without Caden, you know, like sending me five messages and waving his arms in the air. Uh, such a pleasure. I love teaching these classes. Uh, thanks for showing up. You know, I'm gonna get these uploaded to YouTube. I know I'm also behind on that. You know, so uh, you'll be able to see the lessons that you didn't get a chance to in the last week and a half. Okay. Um, remember, there is no class tomorrow. Uh, Leanne is still on set, so there is no class tomorrow. Uh, but she would be back on the 23rd, and will be that much more exciting for if you having had two weeks without her. You'll be like, Leanne, yes. Um, and she'll have her recent onset stories to tell you as well. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. This is great.